Can you hear me? Hello, everyone. My name is Yang Li from Nano, and I'm a PhD candidate from NTU Nano Mechanical Lab. Uh, I'd like to give a short talk about the predicting effect of risky stresses on ductal bridge transition still by using three SLR automata. Find the end method. This is a uh, uh, my talk has six part. First of all, the background. Uh, this work uh, supported by active material too. Uh, as we know, the risk of stress is, is avoidable in a building structure since it can improve the driving force. So they always give uh, uh, influence on the fracture. Actually, in past years, many people have done a lot of uh, work on the influence of risk of stresses on the ductal fracture or brittle fracture. However, in the Arctic region, the temperature is quite low. It's about uh, minus 30 degrees to minus 60 degrees. So the fracture always happens in the transition region of ductal brittle of the material. So our first question is, how the risk of stresses affect the ductal brittle transition of steel? In order to <coughs> in order to simulate the transition behavior of steel, the first question is, is how to deal with the computation of the two failure effort, two fracture mechanics on based on the different failure criteria. Even though a lot of people have have done a lot of uh, research on this issue, however, uh, how to uh, deal with the real com Computation of uh, these two mechanics is uh, still a challenge. In the same time, uh, when we think with the fracture, we, we always consider the um, property of a material. So, how to capture the macrostructure features? For example, the heterogeneity and the random distribution, distribution of a macrostructure and also the material scale. Here we use the solid automa automata finite angle method to in this work. This figure shows the framework of this method. This is the finite element. Inside is the uh, in first view is the finite element. Inside is the material integration point. Inside the integration point we use the different uh, solid automata array to represent the different material. Uh, for example, the ductal C array and also the to say Eric. Here we define the cell size and cell property and state variables and state and evolution role for the cell the automata. According to the evolution role, we can get a parameter of y2 and y3. Get the fraction of the failure, the C A and also we integrate the Y2 and Y3 get the parameter of I uh, to give the feedback of, uh, to the finite element to, for the element, finite element to determine which element will be will fill. Uh, uh, also, uh, we can get uh, some information from finite element to the CA array. It's uh, the strain increment the tensor and also the damage variable. Uh, for the ductal, ductal fracture, here we use the Rosier model based on the critical damage variable or beta f. And also here we introduce the space of the LD as the characteristic length of material. And also we analyze the macroscopy of the material that the distribution of the initial void is it's all, always a, a normal distribution. And for the brittle fracture, here we use the RTR model based on the fracture surface, sigma f, and also introduce the cleavage best size Lb yeah, for, uh, for the characteristic length of the brittle material based on the observation of uh, the fracture of the, of the specimen. And also, we get the distribution of the grain size and the, the misorientation of the, uh, between the grain. Here, uh, this slide shows how we uh, model the, the transition behavior. Here we use the Sharpie specimen. 
and they use the 3D explicit, explicit outputs. And in the damage zone, here is the damage zone, we define the damage parameter of the material in this zone. And also we define the uh, characteristic lines of LD and LV. It's a open two and open one millimeter. This slide is the material we used. This is the stress spring curve of the material at a different temperature from the 20 degrees centigrade to the minus 196 degrees. For the ductile, prime, ductile material, we found the F0, D, sigma 1, and also the distribution of the critical uh, damage variable with the F. And also for the brittle parameter, first we give the equivalent of surface energy from 50, 50 to 200. For, vividis, for the grain size, we give a vivid distribution, three parameter here, and also we find the missed orientation. The, the maximum uh, missed orientation and the threshold of missed orientation. And also give the uh, random number generator to distribute the missed orientation from 0 to 70 for all the brittle cell, cells. Here, this size give, uh, gives a transition curve. First of all, from this figure, we can, we can say the surface energy is uh, clearly is uh, <coughs> temperature dependent. So here we did. Uh, I introduced a facial wall of the surface energy. And this is a, a low displacement curve. From this curve, we can integrate the area below the curve, get the impact energy. And this is the shows uh, the transition curve from uh, minus 160, uh, 196, 96 degree to the 20 degrees centigrade. This is the upper shelf, this is the lower shelf. And in the uh, transitory, transition region, we can clearly say uh, the scattering of the data. So, next step, we implement the residual stresses on the specimen in the damage zone here. This figure shows the home process of simulation. Uh, here, we use the eigen strain method to uh, introduce the uh, residual stresses in the spe into the specimen. Uh, we, here we define the five thermal expansion coefficient and, and also is the uh, isotropic. These two figures show the residual uh, stresses distribution. Here we just give the opening stress S22. The highest uh, residual stresses here is around 600 megapascal. And uh, in the center, it's a much lower, it's the high, highest one, it's the around 300 megapascal. This is along the uh, corrective section, along the x direction. Uh, this slide shows uh, the result of uh, the influence of risk stresses on ductile brittle translation. Here we have divided two groups. One is the compression uh, risk stresses. This is, uh, this is the tension risk stresses compared with the transition curve with uh, no risk stresses. Here we can say with the increment of the risk stresses both for the tension and the compression, the transition curve moves to the left. However, the difference between the transition curve without the risk stresses is very small. And then we compared the tension and the compression risk of stress stresses this the same can say no matter tension or compression risk of stresses has the same influence on the transition curve and also the the difference between the, the between the the difference the influence of the risk of stresses no matter compression or tension is quite small so it's, uh, uh, in the same time, we, we analyze the triaxiality and the opening stresses near the corrective, along the corrective section at outside and the center. We can say that triaxiality and the, the opening stress is quite small. The difference between them is quite small for the different uh, risk stresses. So it's a 
the result seems very strange. So I, I think the possible reason is uh, maybe in this work we use a larger element size, which is the one millimeter, because the calculation process is very time consuming. So because the risk stress is always always a result of a local uh, a constant on the quality. When the mesh size is quite large, the local stress field cannot cannot be represented. So maybe in the future we can amplify the smaller element size. And in the same time, here we use the CBCD to characterize the uh, stress or strain concentrated for the for the both ductile cell and the brittle cell. Here I use the constant value, but Actually, it is uh, for the stress concentration stress field is almost a gradient one. So maybe I, I will use another parameter or function to improve this, this method. So the summary. The first one is that KIF has a potential stimul to stimulate the ductal brittle transition since it can it not only solves the competition between the two failure criteria, but also represents the scatter in the transition region. And this method can be used to investigate, investigate the effect of risk stresses on the fracture. But we have to do a, a further study on, on this issue. Thank you. Thank you for your attention.